Good afternoon, my friends. It's kind of a rainy day in Sacramento, Kentucky. Um, I suppose we need the rain. The farmers, uh, uh, um, I think the corn uh, will shoot up after this uh, rain. I'm not a farmer, but uh, um, I listen to what they have to say. Anyway, I hope you're ready for a new video. This video is about a serious subject. It's about the doctrine of demons or devils. Very, very important that we know and understand this. It comes from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Before we get into it, let's have a word of prayer. Thank you, Father God, for this time together. Teach us the things in 1 Timothy, in chapter 4 and 1 and 2, and other places in the Bible, Lord, about the doctrine of devils and the deceiving of even the elect, if that were possible. Lead, guide, and direct us, Lord. Let us be the right people at the right time for somebody out there that needs Jesus Christ today. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. One of the things that's very common among children is they tell lies. All children are born with a spirit and a carnal nature. It's hard to believe that little kids can do things wrong, but you don't have to teach them to do things wrong. You have to teach them to do things right. They already know about doing wrong. When, when they're little, they form patterns. And it happened to me, and it happened to other people that I know. Um, if you get away once in a while, you get away with telling a little lie here, a little shucky here and there. Um, all of a sudden, it becomes a tool It'll be used when, when needed. And some people take it right on into adulthood and right into life. Now, my mother and my grandmother told me explicitly about lying, that it was wrong, that I should not do it. And much of the time, I paid attention to what they said. And some of the time, I didn't. That's the truth. And if it meant that I needed to tell a little lie to get out of some trouble, then I would do it. And I did that all the way until the day I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Now, I want you to hear that. Yeah, I, I would tell stories that were not true right up until the time I accepted Christ. And then it became a battle. It became a battle of my new spiritual relationship with God and the old sinful nature that was still there. See, we become a new creature, but the old sinful nature doesn't go away. You have to overcome it, and you have to trust the Word of God. See, the Word of God never lies. It always tells the truth. So let's talk about the doctrine of demons and the doctrine of devils. Demons and devils being the same. What does that actually mean? Well, it means that these demons will plant ideas in the minds of people and try to convince them to do little things to begin with that are wrong, that anybody would know are wrong going into a drugstore and stealing candy or taking a pack of cigarettes or some food, and just walking out. Oh, I forgot to pay if you get caught. Plenty of people do that as a living. That's how they get food. That's how they, they lie, they steal, they cheat. All of these things are doctrines of devils. Now, today, 
it's a lot more difficult for Satan and his demons to deceive than it used to be. Satan didn't have any problem deceiving Eve in the garden. Adam loved his wife, and he, he knew she was going to die, and he knew he was going to die if he ate the fruit, but he ate it anyway. He did not want to give up his wife. But today, Satan has to be more subtle. The demons have to be more subtle. So they'll say things like, yes, you can get to, uh, you can get to heaven through Jesus. That's true. And uh, you also can get to heaven through Buddha and Mohammed, and there's 16 or 17 different ways. Not true. Now, we need to study the Word of God to know when these deceptive ways are coming. Jude changed his whole reason for writing the book from he was going to he was going to write it about certain subjects that would be you know pleasant and easy and he changed it to write about false teachers people that lie people that deceive people that purposely are trying to trick people into sinning and into trusting Satan rather than Jesus Christ. And he did a very good job of explaining about false teachers. You see, the false teachers today, they say a lot of things that are right. Oh, yeah, they're, they're kind of pulling you in. They're pulling you in. They say some good things. And then when you think you're comfortable and you think everything's all right, they slip in the lie. They slip in a mistruth. That's why I tell my congregation, you open up your Bibles and you watch the scriptures that I'm using and you make sure that I don't get it wrong. And if I do, you tell me about it. And that has happened. I didn't mean to, to get it wrong. But it would happen from time to time. So we need to have our Bibles, and we need to have them open, and we need to be checking. There is a vast group of ministers in the United States of America and around the world that work for Satan. Oh, they look good, too. Yeah, they're tall, dark, and handsome kind of guys. Um, they're very knowledgeable about the Bible. Those are the ones that are very successful in leading people astray. They get them to do strange things, um, to eat certain kinds of food and not to eat certain kinds of food, and to worship certain things along with Jesus, certain other things. Idols are okay. And graven images, yep, it's all right. It's all right, as long as you don't go overboard. The little sins don't really count, they say. The little sins don't really count. It's the big sins you got to worry about. The little ones, you can forget it. You don't have to go to confession for that. You don't have to get on your knees and ask God to forgive you. He, he, he knows you didn't mean to do that. Not true. That is not true. When we say a lie, when we deceive, when we do something wrong, and our conscience sears our hearts, and we know we've done wrong. You want to hit your knees and ask God's forgiveness, and you want to admit to everyone that you've done. And you're talking to Almighty God about Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and through the power of the Holy Spirit. There's no room for demons in your life. First Timothy Chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, talks about what to watch out for. So make sure you read those two verses of Scripture. And any place in the Bible where it talks about seducing spirits, where it talks about lies, there's a whole body of, of deceiving people 
in many areas. Some areas are noted for it. You can go to areas and cities where there's fortune tellings, where there's Ouija boards, where there's all kinds of conjuring going on, where people will say, I'll go back in your past and I'll talk to people that you want to get a message to. I can do that for you. Fortune telling is very common in many places and very inexpensive. They'll do it sometimes for 15 or $20 and uh, they convince you that they're talking to dead people. You need to stay far away from fortune-telling, horoscopes, Ouija boards, um, divining rods, anything that is subject to deception. It's no good. You have to be extremely careful of the doctrine in the church that you go to. You make sure you ask the right questions. You make sure you know and understand what the church stands for, what the preacher stands for. And if he's preaching anything for salvation other than the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, dust off your feet and keep on going. This is a short video. But it's powerful. Stay away from lying. I had to work hard when I became a Christian to not just pass off some things. I had to be, I had to, to work at admitting to God all the things that I did wrong, all the sins that I had committed, and ask for his forgiveness. And once you start to do that, it becomes easier and easier to trust God, to love God, and he'll help you. But if you get into a church that has got some bad doctrine, you get out of there as fast as you can. Anybody that says there's other ways to heaven besides Jesus, run. Don't walk, run out of there because it's simply not true. And you're in a place that's got a doctrine of deception, demons, and the devil. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together. It's, it's difficult, Lord, to talk about these evil people and evil ways, but we need to be prepared. We need to know and understand them. Lead, guide, and direct us to stay away from lying and deception and anything that tries to keep us from obeying Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you when we pray in the sweet name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow, God willing. Bye-bye.